folks, uh, this is the Hue Smart Plug and it has a failure mode and that failure mode is quite common. All three of these have suffered the same failure mode and what happens is, is that when you uh, try to switch it off suddenly um, and typically just after it's come out of warranty the relay sticks and it's permanently switched on or at least it sometimes can be coerced into turning off by giving it a tap but of course that's not a particularly useful solution if you have to tap it considering it's supposed to be a remote controlled piece of automation and uh, so with that in mind we're going to have a look to see how i took one of these and fixed it um, because on first look on it it's looking like quite a tough thing to get inside and can we get inside these without ruining it and uh, spoiler alert this is one I did earlier this is repaired so I'll show you how I go about doing it so as you'll see I've got a few tools here that I'm going to sort of see if I can use to get this apart and as I mentioned on first looks there's not much of an easy way that it seems you can get into it but if you look quite closely um, there is actually a seam uh, just around here now this is a UK uh, stroke Hong Kong stroke I think Kata and um, the uh, UAE also have this um, sort of UK style plug at least in some places uh, maybe other places in the world as well that have it um, but uh, you'll see there is there does seem to be a seam around here now um, this is a, this may well also I assume be the case um, in other uh, locations around the world so uh, the trick is is to open up this seam gradually and uh, get into the device that way so that we can have a look at what's wrong with it and uh, fix it without it becoming landfill so this is going to take a little bit of uh, jiggy jiggery pokering what i recommend is is you go for the sides first and gradually pull them apart now there's no clips in here there just seems to have they seem to have put some sort of a glue type uh, of a fi uh, fixing on it so with that in mind let's see if we can hack this apart so i'm going to try to first of all open up the seams with your tools of choice and you'll see that there is some give there in the seam and what you have to do is, to, is be careful that you don't garrote yourself or take your fingers out is gradually go around each of the seams and ease them away so that the glue bit of it does it now when you've done that you can then attack the corners um, there doesn't seem to be much in the way of any gluing at the corners but it, it just seems to be the easing at the seams and the sides first is the best way of doing this so i'm going to hack around now <laughs> Let's see if we can get this corner here to release itself. There it is. I can now see it releasing itself. I'm not sure if you can see that. There we go. Uh, it is, or should be, in my limited experience, plain sailing from now on. Ta-da! 
we've got a relay and that's what's sticking. Um, there's the uh, sort of microcontroller RF assembly here for the um, um, interface to your Hue bridge or however else you uh, talk to this. There's a, um, a power supply here for this little bit of gadgetry. This is the little on off switch which you generally see here and um, you see here these this is these are the prongs for to the receptacles for your for the UK three pin plug. So our next uh, vector of attra attack if you like is we need to take this uh, this board out because we're not going to be able to replace this relay. So this is a Zettler relay, um, an AZ or AZ9481. Um, and it's, if you look at the specs on it, I mean, when, when my uh, devices failed, they weren't switching high current. Um, they were all switching things like, uh, I don't know, back to about sort of 500 watts. So I, I, I had a couple of servers on there. I had, um, uh, but not sort of, you know, really meaty servers. I used to uh, run my AV equipment so that uh, that was switched so I, they weren't sitting in standby all the time. Um, so th that's a sort of use case. I wasn't switching on and off three kilowatt heaters or anything like that. This was just switching um, uh, sort of maximum sort of two amps. Uh, and just suddenly one day, you know, just as warranty went over the hill, they uh, stopped they stop working and uh, we have the sticky relay situation. So this is the spec for the for the relay that they have in there. Now you can get them um, but they're not they're not massively easily available. I can't remember if it was DigiKey or Mouser had them in stock when I looked. Um, so I looked to see if there was something alternative. Now there's a whole bunch of specs that we need to make sure that are absolutely bang on right. Um, one is the coil voltage so on here but now if you can I have to zoom in again now. So there's the coil voltage, it's a five volt coil. So we need to make sure that whatever we put in here has got a five volt coil and that it has a reasonable amount of current switching. So this is 16 amps at 125 volts. We're on 240 here or 230 um, and it's spec for 16 amps at uh, 250 volts AC. So that's a spec of that relay. So whatever we, have, whatever we get has got to have a roundabout, or certainly the, the coil has to be right. Um, and possibly, if you're not switching sort of three kilowatts, um, maybe we can get something else if, if necessary. So you can get these, but they're just difficult to find. I can't, in fact, I have a suspicion that when I looked, they weren't actually in stock. So um, I thought, well, let's see if there's an alternative. Then we have another problem. So. The PC board layout. So whatever relay we get is going to have to have the same PC board layout. Now that makes the search significantly harder. So that means you have to uh, have a little search around through the thousands of available relays and narrow it down as best you can and then individually go through each data sheet and see if you can find a relay which has the same dimensions for these. So I've saved you all the effort. Omron, which is a very good, uh, has a good reputation in the relay department, have the G5CA and um, see I'm trying to remember which the exact one is but it's, um, I'll put it in the notes below what the exact model number. But this works absolutely 100% and has the same um, pin layout, which you might be able to see here, uh, as the um, Zettler AZ9481, the one that's already on here. So first things first, there's a screw in here that we need to remove. Um, there is only one screw. Um, That you need to remove but the problem is now is that we have i'm not sure if this will be the same on all um, regions models but on this one we have these uh, lugs that are um, well and truly 
soldered in here. So we're going to have to uh, unsolder those. Now this is this may be easier said than done, dependent on uh, what uh, kind of equipment you have. Um, for, I found that actually to, to get this pulled out, uh, I pretty much had to um, use a, high, a pretty high power soldering iron and um, that, uh, it does take a little bit of doing. And we need to remove the relay. So again, I'm just going to stick a little bit of uh, leaded solder on the the pins, the lugs of this uh, of this relay. Um, so. such a good one is it let me do that okay This one feels like it's just, oh there we go, that's it. So there we go, that's the old relay out. Now, I've got a little uh, box of these relays. I don't know why it's got anti-static in there. I think it just happened to be a box I had on hand. So there we go. So these are the new Omron relays that uh, I'm using to replace, to replace them. They are, I think about $3 a pop in smaller quantities so you'll see the old relay at the top here Let's see if I'm on focus uh, the old relay at the top the zettler az9481 and the new on one here we go it's a g5ca-1a 5 volt dc coil so that hopefully should help you and you'll see the dimensions of this are pretty much almost identical. The Omron is possibly half a millimeter shorter. Sorry, less, yes, is that shorter? Anyway, well, less height, there we go. Um, but you will see the most important thing is that the pin layout is identical to the old one. So, or certainly within, um, within the tolerances of the board and there we go it just goes in there straight away so i'll show you that there we go so th this is the this is the old one here see that the pins are slightly uh, less thick on the zettler on these two lugs anyway the other two are, are, are just pins which are the same sort of size but thankfully in the board layout there's sufficient uh, clearance in the holes to be able to put them in and there we go it just goes straight in so let's just solder this up so we've replaced the relay soldered it up let's um get it soldered back on hopefully it will See, I wonder if there's some residue solder on there which we need to see if we can get rid of. Mm. 
There we go. Right. So we've got a screw to go back in. Again, get the big thick soldering iron out. There we go. Right, so a load of flux residue on here, which probably ought to clean up. Uh, now for this, um, I use uh, something called Flux Clean. Um, now, uh, this is good for, uh, if you've got a sort of reasonably large area and don't want to stick it into a, into a, a bath, um, you have to be careful about sticking certain things into ultrasonic baths, so things like relays, which may not be hermetically sealed. I'm just looking at that, I wonder if we should put some more solder on there. That'd be alright. So the nice thing about this flux clean is that it's got a, it's got a brush on it, so... <coughs> I certainly find it better to that cleaning away large amounts of flux than uh, using IP IPA. Uh, so your mileage may vary, but there you go. Smells a bit like WD-40 for some reason. I don't know what it's got in there, which is <coughs> WD-40-esque. Anyway, let's let that um, dissipate off. Dab some glue on the opposite edges uh, with a view to, uh, so that it as you sort of push it in and pull it out, there's sufficient grip for it not to do that. Um, but also, so that if we have to go inside there again, we can do, and um, it's not going to cause us any grief. <laughs> This is uh, <laughs> one of the things that, that I found is that um, when you're trying to sort of clamp everything together and keep it glued is that as you uh, clamp from the sides it um, pushes the pushes it out a bit so what I've done is I put clamps to clamp to keep it in and also clamps at the sides to simultaneously uh, keep the glue going so uh, you might find that little trick handy so we'll leave that for a little while to go on we go this is after it's been uh, glued and whatever I mean it's not like a quite factory out the straight out of the factory with the bit of the glue sitting there but um, I'm sure if you were a bit neater than I am you could have cleaned up a little bit better now uh, what I've done is I've marked on there that it's only uh, suitable for up to uh, 10 amps um, so uh, if I come to use it I'll know that, that I shouldn't be putting uh, three kilowatt electric fires on there and um, let's see we can plug it in and take it out and it's fine so next bit is uh, the moment of truth is we'll do a little bit of measuring so don't try this at home folks it's a safety feature of UK plugs if you weren't aware that you can't put anything into the prongs unless you uh, release it by popping something into the earth um, you'll see that 
the earth pin is generally is longer so that will open up the uh, pins that I've just put the probes into anyway there you go side thing there so at the moment this is off um, there's a little light which I'm hoping you'll be able to see let me switch that off so that, there we go so you can see it's green at the moment and you can see 200 and uh, no, near enough 240 volts if I press the button again you see it goes red and there we go just some residual pickup voltage uh, either from capacitive or inductive coupling um, there you go on green off there we go on off so that ladies and gentlemen is how to avoid your hue uh, smart plug being landfill Thank you for watching.